Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and that was a very big body of water known as the ocean. And that's because I thought it would go hand in hand with what we're gonna talk about today, which is dehydration and cats. Don't worry, because Puppy is going to be in this video, but he is currently using the litter box. If you are new to this channel and you enjoy cat stuff and learning all kinds of helpful ways to take better care of your kitty or fitness and nutrition things for humans or whatever else I feel like posting, then make sure to click that subscribe button below because we do put out a new video every catter day. And we even sprinkle in some bonus videos throughout the week, like on Whisker Wednesday, for example. Okay, so right into the subject at hand, a common question that I've gotten is how to know if your cat is dehydrated or what you can do if he or she is. Now, in case you weren't sure, the definition of dehydration in the context that we're gonna talk about it today is a harmful reduction of the amount of water within the body. If you're asking yourself what the symptoms are if your cat is dehydrated, let's talk a little bit more about the causes first. So technically the causes of dehydration would be any means of fluid leaving your cat's body. So that can include vomiting and diarrhea, it can include excess urination, and it can even include excessive drooling because these are all ways that fluid is excessively leaving the body. Now those things are causes of dehydration, but more importantly, they are symptoms of a different issue. For example, if your cat has eaten a poisonous substance or chewed on some toxic plants, then those things, the vomiting, diarrhea, excessive urination, excessive drooling, those can be symptoms that your cat has ingested something toxic and that their body is just trying to get rid of it. If this is the case, then it's really important that you get a piece of the plant if possible and take your cat to the vet immediately. But I talk about this more in my video about which plants and flowers are toxic or safe for cats, which I will leave in the description below and also in that eye icon right up in the corner. Now, very often, the cause of these symptoms which cause dehydration are due to an underlying illness or disease, which if you didn't know already, cats are very susceptible to diabetes and kidney problems. And as we peel back the layers a little bit more, those ailments like diabetes and kidney problems are due to another cause. And that is typically due to a lack of fluids, which in most cases is due to a lack of wet or moist food. So even though I say it in basically every cat video, and I'll probably say it a couple more times in this video alone, dry kibble is horrible for your cats and you should avoid feeding your cat dry food at all, but especially dry food only. As for other symptoms, if your cat is dehydrated, and these mainly apply if your cat's in a progressive state of dehydration, those symptoms can include things like your cat acting lethargic, or if your cat seems like he or she has sunken in eyes. Also an elevated heart rate combined with a weak pulse is a strong symptom of progressive dehydration. And if you see your cat panting, that doesn't necessarily mean that your cat is dehydrated. It definitely means that your cat is overheating and that can correlate with dehydration some of the time. Now, if you are wondering of a more accurate or hands-on approach to how you can tell if your cat is dehydrated at home yourself, there are a handful of ways that you can do that. So if you've heard that a dry nose is a sign that an animal is dehydrated. That's not really the case with cats and most veterinary professionals agree that it's not the most accurate way to assess the state of hydration in your feline fur baby. One option that you can do is check your cat's hydration by checking your cat's gums. And you can do this in two different ways, one of which gauges the moisture and the other gauges the capillaries and how fast they fill with blood. To test for moisture, 
you just have to raise your cat's upper lip and touch the gums with your finger. And if your cat is hydrated and healthy, the gums should feel wet, slippery, and maybe even glisten. If your cat is in the beginning stages of dehydration, then the gums may feel tacky or sticky. And if your cat's gums are completely dry, then they are considered to be six to 7% dehydrated according to the Merck Veterinary Manual. Now the other test you can do on the gums is the capillary filling time test. For this test, you just press on your cat's gums with a finger and you'll see once you release the pressure that the area will be white. But if your cat is hydrated, it will take two seconds or less to go back to the pink color. The longer that the gums remain white and the longer that they take to go back to that healthy pink color, the more likely it is that your cat is dehydrated. Now, the most common way that you can tell if your cat is dehydrated at home, and probably the easiest way, rather than sticking your finger in your cat's mouth, is the skin tent or skin turgor test. For this test, you want to pinch the skin behind your cat's shoulder blades on its back, not behind the neck, because this area is generally thicker. And then you lift to form a little tent and release it. In a healthy, hydrated cat, the skin will release and fall back into place pretty much immediately. If your cat is dehydrated, then the skin tent will return to its original state very slowly or even worse, stay up in that tented position. Now, even though, like I just mentioned, this skin tent test is one of the best ways that you can gauge your cat's hydration at home, there are some factors that can affect the accuracy of it. For example, if your cat is older, they tend to have less skin elasticity anyway. And if your cat is overweight or obese, or if your cat has skin issues, it might be more difficult to gauge your cat's hydration accurately doing this test. Which again, like I always suggest, it's why it's super important that you should consult with your vet if you think there is anything seriously wrong or if you have any health concerns with your furry baby. So. What do you do if you believe that your cat is dehydrated? And especially if your cat is expressing symptoms that I mentioned earlier that show progressive dehydration, like the sunken eyes and the fast heart rate with the weak pulse. The number one thing that I just mentioned is to go to your vet. Not only will they be able to assess your cat, being the medical professionals that they are, but they can give your cat IV fluids if it's necessary of the proper electrolyte balanced solution. Because when you're dehydrated, it's not just water, there are important minerals and nutrients involved. So it's important to handle things properly, which your vet can do. The second thing that you can and should do is give your cats fluids. Cats, believe it or not, have an inherent aversion to drinking water separately from their meals, which we will talk a whole lot more about in next week's video. So you will likely find more success in trying to incorporate more fluids into their meals and food as opposed to giving them something like Pedialyte or Gatorade, which you'd be surprised a lot of websites actually recommend doing. Now, some better cat-friendly options would be giving your cat the juice from a tuna can. Just do your best to find a high quality tuna that is either low sodium or no salt added. You can puree raw chicken thighs with water or a high quality raw beef or lamb. You can whisk up some egg yolks with water. Just make sure it's not the raw egg whites, but raw egg yolks. Or if your cat is already eating canned wet food, then you can just add some more moisture to it, either with straight up water or with the tuna juice, or you can even get some sodium free or very low sodium organic chicken broth and mix some of that in just to give the food more moisture. And that leads us to tip number three, which is also my suggestion for the best way to prevent dehydration in your cat in the first place, at least through dietary influence. And that, unsurprisingly, is to feed your cat a raw food or prey model diet. You guys knew that was coming. Not only will your cat get ample hydration and the proper nutrients, 
but you'll also be honoring your cat's inherent instincts and obligatory carnivoric needs. And if you are new here and asking yourself, what the heck is the raw food or prey model diet for cats? And even better yet, how do I get started? Then just make sure you check out my cat stuff playlist, which I'll link in the description below, but also in that eye icon in the corner, because there you will find tons and tons of informational videos, including three different recipe videos, how to make it without a grinder, how to make it using different meats, as well as access to my recipe and portion size calculators. There's so much stuff, so make sure to check that out once you're done watching this video. And by the way, if you are here because you are legitimately concerned that your cat is having some issues or maybe dehydrated and you are feeding your cat currently only dry kibble food, and the thought of feeding your cat raw meat and organs and a raw food diet just freaks you out a little too much right now to try it out because you wanna educate yourself some more, in the very, very least, please at least make sure to just switch your cat's food from dry kibble, crappy, crappy, sickness causing food to wet canned food in the very, very least because that is some kind of improvement from what the dry kibble is. And I do hope that you choose to go check out my cat stuff playlist because I hope that it helps to educate you more on the proper diet that will help your cat thrive and be with you as long as he or she can because let's be honest, we love them so, so much. If you looked this up and you're watching this video right now, I know that you love your little house line at home. So I just hope to do the best I can to help you have them live as long as possible. And all of that said, if you are here because your cat already eats wet canned food or better yet, a raw cat food or prey model diet, but you notice that your cat isn't touching his or her water bowl at all and you're worried simply because your cat isn't drinking water anymore, that is exactly what next week's video is going to be about and it's full of some great information. So make sure that if you aren't subscribed already and part of the Cat Lady Fitness family, that you click that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon right next to it because that will let you know as soon as that video goes up. All right guys, if you liked this video or found it helpful, please make sure to click that thumbs up below and also share it with any other cat people who you think would benefit from this information. Oh, oh my God, I'm sorry. No, honey. Oh, you're covering the mic. Well, I just want us to say bye together. Okay, that's his way of saying thank you for watching and I thank you for watching and we will see you guys next week. Bye.